There's no place like home is one of the oldest cliches in the book. But for me, when it comes to public land hunting, that statement rings true. I've hunted all over the West, and whether you're a resident or a non-resident, it's hard to find a place with more access in longer seasons than the big sky country of Montana. You look at the total amount of public land that we have in Montana, we have 31 million acres of public land. That's a lot of land to go and chase deer and elk. On top of that, we've got another 8 million acres enrolled in what's called our block management program. What it does is it pays private landowners to open their property to public hunting. So if you're looking to go out west and do a hunt, there's no state that is as easy to hunt, has so much public land, such long seasons. You can do six weeks of archery, and if you aren't successful, you can come back and do five weeks of rifle. And the weather is beautiful. Almost too beautiful for elk hunting, but here we go. Wish us luck. Montana, public land, general unit elk. If you were a non-resident, you could drive to Montana today and buy this tag. There's 2,000 of these tags left to just be bought over the counter right now. And I hope when this episode is done, I show you all that you should have been here in 2013 and bought one of those tags and come and shot an elk. The planning of this hunt is that me and my cameraman, Brad Beast, are gonna haul in a camp. We could hunt from the trailhead every day, but with all of our production equipment and everything, it's easier to haul it up there, set up a small spike camp, and hunt from there. We know we're gonna have other hunters. I've hunted here before, and I think it was four or five years ago, my buddy Bart May shot a really nice bull in here, right on these same ridges we're gonna be hunting. I get him. So the whole purpose of this, this episode, besides me wanting to shoot an elk or a mule deer, is to show you how easy this is to do. Time to get organized and go find an elk for this evening so that tomorrow morning, I know where he's at and I can shoot him. As October gives way to November, the elk herds disperse with cows heading for food and bulls finding their post-rut lairs where they seek safety and survival. In two weeks, mule deer bucks will drop to the valleys in search of does. But for now, the bucks stage on higher ridges, alone and alert, soon to be impaired by the annual wonders of the November rut. Two bulls right over there. These ridges we're hunting form a perfect intersection, extreme enough to attract bachelor groups of bull elk, and just above the foothills where mule deer bucks will soon be chasing does. I'm not gonna be picky. I'll tell you that right now. I, I can shoot a spike, a cow, or any branch antlered bull in this unit because it's over objective. So, gonna make a count, I hope. Mule deer down here, I can't tell if it's a buck or an owl. The sun's going down, and uh, I think I'm gonna hoof it out of here. Got quite a ways to go. And hopefully, come back here in the morning, and those two bulls will be here. Uh, when you only got four days to do it, you don't wanna waste any opportunities. So, if he's big, we'll shoot him. If he's not that big, we'll probably shoot him. And off we go. Well, sun is rising on opening morning here in Montana. Last night we came in, scouted this basin, and there were two bulls down there, little guys. And uh, right as we were packing out, we saw three guys come hiking up the bottom there. And now I see them. 
They must have spent the night in here somewhere. I see him out on this point down here now that the sun came up. I can... A lot of country for those elk to be spread out in. There's some shooting way over there. <sighs> Not what I'd hoped for. I have big expectations, to be honest with you. But we're sitting there, and, and a lot of times, especially as a public land tactic, other hunters will drive game to you. And Brad and I are on this, this ridge like this. He's kind of glassing out this way. I'm walking down, glassing out this way. There's some elk in the timber coming this way right down here. Don't want them on the wall. And just as I expected, just as often happens, there's a hunter on the trail of these bulls somewhere, kick them out of their bed probably, and they're gonna come right past me and I'm gonna shoot a public land bull on opening morning of rifle season in Montana. one in the back if he gives me a shot, Brad. Come on, turn, turn. And so I'm sitting there, I got the bipod out. I am ready. I mean, this, this bull is gonna die. And wouldn't you know, they come around and the biggest bull stops right in that patch that I had uh, I'd ranged at 374 yards. And if he was standing broadside, I know I'm gonna shoot. But he's, he's downhill from me, and he's kind of quartering towards me. And a bull, even, a, even a, a Rocky Mountain elk bull quartering towards you, you only have about that much of a, of a shot window. And as much as I shoot, I'm pretty sure I can thread it in there. But why would I do that if they're continuing to walk down underneath where we're set up? So I, I passed on the shot. Dang it. Just disappeared over that little ledge there. blowing from that hunter to them. And when they smelled him, whoom, they turned and they were down off the cliff so fast, I never got that other shot. I have made that shot lots of times. But I guess the lesson for all of us is if you're not 100% comfortable, you don't take the shot. I was only about 95% comfortable. How do we kill anything on TV? The largest federal public land access program in Montana is the Land and Water Conservation Fund, or LWCF. LWCF has secured hundreds of thousands of acres of public hunting access in Montana, 
been helping generate over a billion dollars a year of wildlife-related recreation in the Big Sky State. Gallatin National Forest, right here where we are hunting, now has over 100,000 acres of improved hunting access as a result of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. It's the third day of the Montana rifle season, but I'm hiking in for just my second day of hunting. After passing up a difficult shot on a decent bull on day one, 50 mile an hour winds brought in an early winter storm. And being just 60 miles from home, Brad and I decided to leave camp, wait out the storm, and return today, hoping the weather change will have the animal activity rising and the hunter activity declining. Walking into camp, it's apparent we made the right decision. Huh. Glad I don't have to sleep in this cameraman's tent. Looks to be a little bit filled with snow. After a quick camp refit, Brad and I headed for the high ground. And with the weather improving, so was my optimism. Shoot a buck or a bull tonight. Not quite three o'clock. I figure by about 5.30, we'll have one on the deck up there. There's nothing quite like the brilliance of the Montana Rockies after a fresh snow. This weather that brings such beauty to the landscape and hopefully a change in hunting fortune has my mind thinking about rutting mule deer. The snow won't have much effect on the elk, but it will push the mule deer does to lower elevations. And with any luck, the bucks, in the mood for love, will move out of the high country. These burn areas attract a lot of animals once the first snow comes because they usually stay void of snow, at least the south facing and the ridge top parts do. And uh, that's feed. So it wouldn't surprise me in the evenings to see some bucks start coming onto these ridges and just staging and waiting for the rut. So Brad and I are sitting up there and we, we're looking at these burned out areas, these ridges that always, when the wind blows the snow off them, always hold game, whether it's elk or deer. And a hunter comes down off the point of this way far ridge, and I'm like, ah, kind of messes that up. There won't be any game out there. So I'm more glassing over straight north or over to the east, and I look, and I'm like, tell Brad, I'm like, I think that's a deer right over there where that hunter just walked through 20 minutes ago. I just spotted a pretty darn nice mule deer buck right out there on that other ridge over there. It's gonna be a long hoof. About 10 after five right now. He's looking straight at me, or feeding kind of straight at me. And I can just see he's pretty wide and he looks like he's got a lot of mass. And I told Brad, I said, you know, that is a really good public land mule deer, especially in Southwest Montana. And if we're gonna get him, we better get on our horses and get over there. We gotta go. We gotta get over there fast. It's late on my second day of elk and deer hunting in my home state of Montana, and I'm racing the setting sun to close the gap on what I think is a quality public land mule deer buck. There's this, there's this tree where those two elk were on the scouting night. He's around the corner from that. So if we stay along the tree line and get up above him, hopefully we can see him down below. And we've been out of sight of this buck now for 20 minutes that it took us to go down and around and up. And, you kind of make mental landmarks of what you're looking for when you drop out of sight. And even though that whole ridge had burned, there were a couple fir trees that hadn't burned. And he was feeding in this little bowl right below this green fir tree that had survived the fire. And so I get over there and I'm looking and I'm like, you know what? 
There's probably a dozen green fir trees scattered on this ridge. Which one is it? And so we keep going and I'm peeking. No, don't see him. Keep going, look over. No, don't see him. Finally, I've concluded that maybe this buck got out of here. There was this little tabletop of rocks above him. And I told Brad, if we can get to that tabletop of rocks, he's either right down in there or he's gone, one or the other. And so we're sneaking out there and I'm looking, looking over. And I know he probably heard us and smelled us because the wind was going pretty close from us to him. And he's just looking, trying to figure out what we are. And Brad's far enough back here that it's such a steep ledge from here, he can't see. <laughs> you want to see a cluster? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this on TV. We peek over. That buck is right here. And we can't get on him. We can't get on him with the camera. And I'm like this. With one hand. Just <laughs> like this. And he takes off running. And I put the put the crosshair right on the, the tip of his shoulder and boom it felt perfect I think he piled up down there oh, I gotta be honest with you when I looked at that that deer I wasn't really looking at the antlers I just knew it was a good public land buck and I knew that this was the kind of opportunity that we'd come here and work so hard to, to produce anybody could come and do this Right now, there are 2,000 tags available in Montana for an elk deer combo. If you wanted to come here and do what I just did, no draw, no nothing. Just come here, buy your tag, come up in the mountains and do it. And you probably would have killed one of those bulls I passed on the first morning. Tags are easy to draw. We got almost, I don't know, 33 million acres of public land, something like that. We got 8 million acres of block management that's open to public hunting. <sighs> don't come to Montana. You'll just shoot big elk and nice mule deer. Pretty easy to follow this blood trail. Holy cow. He is bleeding profusely. And he is laying right here profusely. Oh, look at all the junk he has. Oh man, he's got goofy stuff everywhere. I've never shot a buck like this. Look at that. Huh? He's got junk over here, one there. I don't know what he's got going on this side. He's got an extra one there, an extra one there, and there. <laughs> Look at the webbing in that. I'm a very happy guy. Thank you, Mr. Buck. Thank you. All of us dedicated to public land hunting understand that trophies come in all shapes and sizes. Well, this is a beautiful mule deer buck, for me, it's one of my greatest trophies because it gave me the opportunity to show all of you just what Montana has to offer to everybody, resident and non-resident alike. There aren't too many places where that's possible. But in big sky country, there are fresh tracks available to pretty much anyone every year.